Guys, we have started off with ketoconazole details, KTZ. So let us just revise prototype it is of azoles. It is, uh, it can be used topically, orally. So it can be used for superficial or deep fungal infections. But it is very toxic, so it is preferred topically. It is broad spectrum. In systemic mycosis, especially for cosidiod idomycosis and blastomycosis it is used as second line, second choice. Then we saw some more information. It is absorbed very well in the acidity, gastric acidity. It is absorbed well. It has a dose dependent elimination. Which was the other drug which has dose dependent elimination guys? Phenytoin, correct? And it is an enzyme inhibitor, so it will increase the levels of other drugs. So you should be very careful. It can be used to treat dermatophytosis. It can be used in systemic mycosis, but triazoles have become first line now. And KTZ is only second choice. In, in vaginitis, if it is recurrent or if topical agents are not working, then you can give oral KTZ. Cushing syndrome, it can be used as not as antifungal, but to reduce the production of corticosteroids. Not as antifungal. Okay. We saw the adverse effects. It is very toxic. It reduces the hormonal levels. So it can, in men, it can lead to gynecomastia, loss of hair, libido, oligozoospermia. In females, it can cause menstrual irregularities. Other than that, standard nausea, vomiting, hypersensitivity. Drug interactions. See, there are things which reduce the KTZ action. What are those? Because KTZ requires gastric acid to get absorbed, if you are giving any drugs that reduce gastric acid, then obviously absorption of KTZ will get affected. So what will you give to reduce gastric acid? H2 blockers, proton pump inhibitors like uh, omeprazole, etc. And tacids, right? Then, rifampin, anti-epileptics like phenobarbitone, carbamazepine, phenytoin, these will increase the metabolism of KTZ and hence reduce its efficacy. Okay? So, all these are going to reduce KTZ value. Moving on, ketoconazole, what it will do? It is very like a very, very good drug. It will let others suppress it and it will increase the value of others. So it will, it will actually an enzyme inhibitor. So it inhibits enzymes. So as it inhibits enzymes, it raises the blood levels of certain drugs, which are those drugs. So many drugs are there. Ferritoin, digoxin, carbamazepine, omeprazole, diazepam. Cyclosporin, haloperidol, nifedipine, other DHPs. What are DHPs? Dihydropyridines, warfarin, HIV protease inhibitors, sulfonylurea statins. So obviously you should be very careful. Imagine you give warfarin and ketoconazole. That's it. The person will bleed so much. Just look at this guys. If you combine ketoconazole with sulfonylurea, sulfonylurea's effect will increase. The person can land up in hypoglycemia. If you give it with phenytoin, phenytoin levels can increase and there can be phenytoin toxicity. If you give it with cyclosporin, the, the nephrotoxicity can increase. Warfarin, the person can bleed more. Okay. So, summarizing. So, because there are a lot of things, you can try to remember at least these many. Right? So, I, we hope this is clear, guys. So, let us revise the drug interactions of ketoconazole. There are people who want to suppress ketoconazole, like proton pump inhibitors, antacids, H2 blockers. These people want to suppress ketoconazole. Rifampin, antiepileptics like phenytoin, carbamazepine, phenobarbitone. These also want to uh, suppress KTZ by inhibiting its metabol, I mean, by promoting its metabolism. Moving on, ketoconazole is very, very Dana, Shura, Vira, Karna types. The Karna types, ketoconazole, it is going to allow other drugs to have more effect. 
like it allows sulfonylureas to have more effect, phenytoin to have more effect, cyclosporin to have more effect, warfarin to have more effect. Okay guys, so that's all about ketoconazole. See you in the next video. Bye, bye, bye.